sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I'm sharing with you how I quilted this beautiful baby quilt using a new pattern. To me, it's a very simple way to quilt, but I have never used this design before, so I thought I'd show it to you today. When I make a quilt sandwich, I typically use a 505 spray and beginning on one end, since this is a small quilt, I sprayed the batting and here I'm using a 80-20 batting. It's part cotton, part polyester and I'll spray the batting and smooth the quilt top on top of the batting and then I'll do the same with the backing. Had this beautiful yellow fabric in my stash that uh, matched perfectly with the yellows in my quilt top and I had just enough and I it's always fun when that happens it's like this piece of yardage was just waiting for its moment and this is the time this little piece of yellow fabric came out to shine and believe it or not I had a little label on there that said 25 cents I think I bought it at the thrift store for 25 cents and it was just the perfect size I will put um, my quilting lines diagonally and do some squares that are on point using that 45 degree angle. But today I'm going to try to make some diamond shapes using the 60 degree line on my ruler here. So I tried to line it up with the edge of my quilt and I'm going to use some painter's tape and I'll paint, I'll put the tape all the way along that ruler, all the way through the middle of my quilt. Here's my first line that I'm going to put in my quilt and I'm just going to sew right next to the tape using a little bit bigger stitch and I've mentioned before that my sewing machine, I have a Juki here, seems to do just fine without using a walking foot but I know that some machines if you're doing a straight stitch, a quilting line, uh, you might want to use your walking foot. As you get to know your machine, you'll know what your machine can and can't do.
I had that first line in there, I took my ruler and I laid my ruler three inches. I put the three inch uh, line on my first stitch, so I measured three inches away and I used the same tape. The tape uh, was able to really pretty much um, get reused over and over again for this whole quilt, so I used these little pieces of tape and I'll just move out from the center here three inches away. Here are my quilting lines so far, three inches apart. And now what I wanna do is use the same 60 inch line, but I'm gonna go the opposite way so that I will be able to make some diamonds in this quilt.
my diamonds so far. I really like the way this is turning out. So I'm going to continue working until this whole quilt is full of those pretty diamond shapes. After quilting the whole quilt, I trimmed off the excess batting and backing using the quilt top as my guide. I had just enough of this yellow fabric to cut some strips for my binding. They're two and a half inch wide strips, the width of the fabric, and I'll put them together sort of at a 90 degree angle here and also from corner to corner and trim off that extra triangle there. And then I will press this long binding strip in half. attaching the binding to the back and then I'll sew it onto the front. I'll top stitch on the front. So I'm going to leave a tail about 10 inches long, maybe a little longer, and I'm going to sew all the way around my quilt. Starting on this side, I'm going to stop before I hit that corner about a quarter inch away from the first corner. I'm going to stop and then I'm going to pivot and sew off of the corner make sort of a very small diagonal stitch right off the corner. I don't know if you can see it here. And then I'll turn my quilt. I'll fold the binding up and down right on that stitch there. And then I'm gonna start at the top and I'll do that all the way around. I stopped before I um, got to the end and I want two tails. I will fold one of those tails 
and I'll cut off the one on the right there right next to the fold and then I'm going to measure using that piece of binding it's two and a half inches and I'll use that as my guide so I need one of those tails to be two and a half inches longer than um, the quilt top basically so I'm going to put them right sides together at an angle, a 90 degree angle, just like we um, did before with the binding before it came on the quilt. And then I'm going to sew it a diagonal seam from corner to corner and make sure that my binding fits onto my quilt. I pinned down that binding along that open area where I haven't sewed it down yet and now I will finish sewing the binding on. This is called a continuous binding. You can't really tell where you start started and where, where you stopped. And then I'll roll the binding to the front and I'll top stitch all the way around. Here it is, it's all done. I love that diamond shape, just a little bit different than the squares on point that sometimes you'll see. And um, this quilt is almost all ready to go. I just need to add a label. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.